Okay, here we go. All right, this has been a video that I've been trying to work on for a very long time. Uh, there is a lot to cover in this video, and I always kind of felt like I was never fully explained in other videos how to really get the best quality settings out of OBS when I was streaming. So after a lot of research and just watching other videos myself and making my own best deductions, my own best tests, today I wanna to show you how to get the best streaming settings possible out of your streaming setup. Now, what that means is I'm going to show you how to use the X264 encoder and the new NVENC encoder for your streaming setup. I've even made a little handy dandy flow chart in the description down below. All you gotta do is join the Discord and it will be free for you to grab in there and it will help you decide what is the best course of action for your streaming setup. The hardest thing about this video is that there's no possible way I could cover every single streaming setup. So that's why I made the flow chart so that you can determine what is the best for you, but I still go over what is the best target settings for both X264 and NVENC. So let's hop into it. Okay, so here we are in OBS. So before we start even getting our encoder set up, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go up to view and then go into docs and open your stats box. Now, if it's not docked, just grab it and put it on here. The nice thing about this is that it keeps track of everything that's happening in OBS for encoding and when you're live streaming. So there's three parameters that you can look at. You have frames missed due to rendering lag, skipped frames due to encoding lag, and then dropped frames due to the network. So the first one, rendering, specifically deals with your graphics card and how the preview is dealing with this, right? So basically, if you're getting lag in OBS, that's gonna be a rendering issue. If you're getting encoding lag, that's a processor issue and specifically whatever encoder you're using, and that's what we're here to talk about today. And if you're getting dropped frames, that means that you're getting an issue with your network. Now that we have the stats open and you understand the three parameters of what we're looking at, let's go into the settings. And the first thing that we're going to focus on is the video. Now the video today that I'm doing, I wanna specifically focus on getting a good 1080p 60 frames per second quality for your stream. So basically understanding every parameter is that the base canvas resolution, this is what your Windows settings are at, right? Not only is this what OBS is seeing as your base resolution, but this is also what your resolution on the Windows settings is as well. So that means that your display is actually set to 1080p. The output scaled resolution is what stream is going to see. So make sure that this is set to 1920 by 1080. That way you are streaming at 1080 if you want to go down to a lower resolution. 1280 by 720 is your 720p. And if you want to go to 900p, which is a nice in-between, we're not losing all of the sharpness, but not having as much of the taxing load as 1080p, you can manually type in 1600 by 900, and that will still keep the aspect ratio at 16 by nine. OBS won't give you any issues as you saw that little red line of text pop up there. And then you'll see some streamers like Summit or Tim will stream at this. It's a nice in-between but for the most part, you can compensate for that data loss with the proper encoding settings. So let's just set that back to 1080p. Now, if you would downscale, Lanxos is the best downscale filter, basically because it has the higher, highest sample rate. The higher the samples, the better the sharpening will be. Now, it can't totally make up for just losing the actual pixel density itself, because when you go, let's say from 1080p, down to 720p you're effectively cutting the amount of pixels in half so you're losing that pixel density so if you have 16 pixels per inch at 1080p you'd essentially have eight pixels per inch displaying the same image so it's going to look softer and not as clear but again we're staying at 1080p so you don't have to worry about the downscale filter and common fps value is 60. i think this is pretty self-explanatory this is your frames per second so once we've done that just click apply you can just copy these Next, we're going to focus on the output, and this is going to be the primary focus. Now, by default, OBS starts at simple, right? But we don't want simple because this isn't what's going to get you the best quality for your stream. So go ahead and change this over to advanced. Now, I already had custom settings here, so some of these might already be a little different. I tried reverting it back to what I remembered as default, but we're going to change all of it anyway. So first we're gonna focus on the X264 encoder. The X264 encoder is great for low bitrate and it uses your processor, not your graphics card. Before we dive any deeper into this, I do have a flowchart that is going to explain what settings you should use for your 
streaming setup in my Discord. So feel free to click the link in the description down below, and then you'll have a free download of the flowchart describing whether or not you should use X264 as your encoder or NVENC, because I will be going over both of them. So for the first encoder, we're gonna be using X264. This uses your processor. Now, make sure you have enforced streaming service encoder settings enabled. What this is basically going to say is if you're not a Twitch partner, it's going to keep everything in this parameter within the guidelines of Twitch affiliate or non-affiliate. Because if you're a Twitch partner, say you could uncheck this and then set your bit rate to 8,000. Twitch affiliates and non-Twitch affiliates that are not partners get capped at a 6,000 bit rate, which is equivalent to six megabit upload. And when you're a partner, they'll let you get away with going up to 8,000, which will ultimately help increase the stream quality. But for most people, 6,000 is where we're going to be staying. So make sure you keep this enabled. Now, the rescale output, we don't have to worry about this because we're staying at 1080p. The first thing we're going to focus on is the rate control. There are four selections here. CBR is the one that I always suggest. This is continuous bit rate. What this is basically saying is that every frame that is being encoded for stream is going to be continuously encoded at the exact same bit rate. If you set something to, let's say VBR, which is variable bit rate, that would make it so that every frame is not encoded at the exact same. It's going to encode it at what's available rather than just continuously saying 6,000 for every single one, which is what we're going to set our bit rate to. This is the maximum bit rate that you can set as a Twitch affiliate or non Twitch affiliate that's not a partner. Just understand that the bitrate is directly related to the upload speed of your internet. So if you don't know what you're getting for your upload, go to speedtest.net and make sure you do a speed test. And whatever your upload speed is, it's going to be relative to this. So for example, let's say you have 400 down by 20 up, which is what I get through Spectrum. 20 upload is the equivalence of 20,000 bitrate. That's 20 upload right there. So that would mean that 6,000 bit rate is the equivalent of six megabit upload. Now you never want to use all of your upload for streaming. It's important to note that let's say you only have five upload. You never want to set this to 5,000 because the moment that you set it to 5,000, you're going to use all of your bandwidth and you're going to crash your internet. What happens is it locks your modem and essentially makes it so that it can't communicate with any of the servers. You've essentially filled the pipeline so that you can no longer have any data throughput. So make sure that your bit rate is always lower than what your upload is and that your cap until you're a partner is 6,000. Side note, if a partner is watching this, you can uncheck the enforced streaming service encoder settings again and set this to 8,000, which an extra two megabit will make a pretty drastic difference for your quality for making streams better. So make sure that you have enforced stream service encoder settings enabled. Make sure that it's set to 6,000. So basically what the custom buffer size says is that if you're in a high motion environment, and 3000 bitrate is not enough to make the stream look good, OBS will spike up to 6000 maximum to make sure that it can compensate for that extra data it needs to make sure that you don't take any quality loss. The problem is, is that this is very taxing on your network and that it can also make viewers buffer if they don't have transcoding, which is the little gear on the video player to select from 1080p, 720p, 480, so on, so that you can have different viewing choices for your buffer rate. So for now, let's just leave custom buffer size unchecked. It's almost never used in live streaming. The keyframe interval specifically also deals with motion blur as well. And every keyframe interval basically says that when you're moving, these two frames will specifically be clear. If you've ever tried to pause your stream and you noticed that it's a blurry frame, this is what keyframe interval helps with. The higher the keyframe interval, the clearer more frames will be. But not only will this be more taxing on your encoder, but it also drastically increases the latency for your viewers because it's taking OBS more time to make sure every single frame is clear. Two is the sweet spot between making sure you have nice clear frames and a nice latency for your viewers to see at. Now for CPU usage preset, this is the primary focus of X264. CPU usage and bitrate go hand in hand. The short and sweet of this is the faster that the encoder is, the less taxing it will be, but the worse your quality will be. So the slower you set it, the better your quality will be, but it comes at an extremely taxing price. Moving from very fast to faster alone, you will see probably about a 10% increase in processor usage. It is very taxing and I do not recommend moving this if you are on a single PC setup, unless you have at least, I would say an eight core processor. And even then you really wanna just try and leave this at very fast and just leave it at a 6,000 bit rate 
because you really want to try and get the best performance out of your game footage and draw as many frames as you can in your games that you're playing and by moving this slower you are ultimately going to be taking the performance away from your games because what's happening when obs is streaming your games and obs are constantly battling for resources to make sure that that everything runs at the best that it can and then when you are taking more resources away from the game by increasing your processor speed in obs the problem is that you are essentially taking away the ability of the processor to then make more frames available in the game 1080p 60 at very fast on a single pc setup is going to be pretty taxing. Now, let's say you're on a dual PC setup like I am. I have a Gen 1 Threadripper, which is a 16 core, 32 thread processor. What I set mine to is slow. This is what my streaming settings are. This is how I get very good quality 1080p without compensating for making 8,000 bit rate. Just as a side note, there is no substitute for lack of bit rate. You can only increase your resolution so much before you have to mandatorily increase your bit rate to make up for the loss of quality. Your bit rate directly correlates to how much data is being sent to Twitch so that you can see a better quality stream. I will say in my experience of doing dual PC setups that you can get 1080p 60 medium out of an 8 core 16 thread processor like a 3700x but it has to be specifically on a dedicated streaming pc if you're on a single pc setup don't move this at all again i'm going to have the flow chart that will specifically help you set the best encoder settings for your streaming setup there's no way i can possibly tell you the best streaming settings for every single streaming setup i just don't know what everybody's streaming setup will be so this is what I'm using to make sure that my streaming setup looks the best and what I've experienced to look the best for a dual PC streaming setup. Currently we are on CBR, 6,000 bit rate, two keyframe interval, and we're on a slow CPU preset. This is assuming that we're on my 16 core 32 thread setup, right? So for profile, basically this also helps with the fidelity of the video quality. Baseline is the equivalent of basically watching an old Skype video call. The main tune deals with non-high definition and high specifically likes to focus on dealing with high definition. So I always set my profile high because we're dealing with 1080p 60 FPS. Now tune for the most part specifically deals with different types of video. You don't have to use this if you're doing gaming footage. Most of these won't apply to the game footage. So for example, film, it's going to focus on trying to deal with film footage, animation, grain, etc. I set mine to film because film specifically focuses on trying to remove any grain or noise in the footage. Now grain can try and sustain that, but I specifically try to set mine to film just so that it has a little bit of that grain removal. Again, it's not really going to be super noticeable. It's a very subtle addition to your encoder settings, but ultimately that's what I like to set it to is slow, high and film. And that seems to work the best for my streaming quality. Now, if you're on a dual PC streaming setup, this would be your target settings for what I believe is the best quality for streaming on Twitch. If you're getting encoding lag, take your CPU usage and drop it down to medium. The usage from medium to slow is exponentially higher from going from medium to slow. To give you an example, I can't even do slow to slower on a 16 core 32 thread processor. That's how much more taxing this encoder gets. And realistically, you're going to hit a law of diminishing returns that after slow, you can't notice a difference without increasing your bitrate. That's why I was saying there is no substitute for bitrate. You have to increase your bitrate. After a certain point, the encoder can no longer compensate without having a higher bitrate to allow more data through the pipe to fill it up and look better. So there we go. That's the X264 best preset settings you can attain. That is the goal in which you want to try to get to if you're on a dual PC setup. Next, we're going to focus on the NVENC encoder. Now, if there are two choices in your encoder, make sure you click on the new. This will specifically focus on the touring hardware or the 20 series graphics cards from NVIDIA. Now, using the NVENC encoder, the new one with 20 series is going to be your best case scenario for a single PC streaming setup. If you have a 20 series card, so like a 2060, 2070, 2080, or you're going to be getting a 30 series card, anything with 20 series or newer on a single PC streaming setup, use the new NVENC encoder. 
this not only will take off so much load on your processor to draw more frames so not only will your game be able to be rendered effectively with the processor and the graphics card but it's such a minimalistic hit of performance on your graphics card that your frames in game will be significantly higher than that of an x264 encoder on a single pc setup and the best part is is that even on the best preset of this, it rivals X264 medium at 1080p 60 at a 6,000 bit rate. Leave your streaming service encoder settings checked. We already talked about that. We're not rescaling. Set to CBR. Make sure this is set to 6,000. Wanna make sure that that is the quality. Keyframe interval to two. So your preset, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. The higher the quality, the more taxing. The better the performance, the worse quality. That's pretty much the perfect trade-off. Quality looks great. You can go to max quality. I would suggest staying at the quality setting, not the max quality setting, unless you're on a dual PC setup. I have noticed on single PC setups, if you set it to max quality, it can cause some rendering and encoding lag just because it is using too much. It all depends on what your in-game settings are, what game you're playing, and also what your settings are in OBS. Quality is more than enough, especially when we set our profile to high. We're keeping it at that. So we're going to make sure that we have look ahead and psycho visual tuning turned on. Make sure you have GPU set to zero. Basically, GPU says if you have more than one graphics card in your system, you can tell it which one to encode with specifically. And the P frames are specifically relative to the look ahead. And it says, okay, in a high motion situation, this is going to take more frames to make it look clear so it's not as blurry. I'll also leave a link in the description down below. This is directly taken from NVIDIA's site with the new NVENC encoder. This is the best quality without specifically going to max quality you can get on a single PC setup. If you have a dual PC setup, I would suggest just going to max quality instead if you're using the NVENC encoder. But if you're using the software encoder and you have a high core processor, use the X264 settings. And there you have it. So now you know how to set up the X264 encoder. Just remember that the preset speed for the encoder is the most taxing part for X264. The slower you set it, the better it looks, but at the cost of performance, both in game and in OBS. So make sure that you don't ever go too slow. You can fiddle around with it a little bit and try and find the best that works for you. Again, I have the flow chart in Discord. Feel free to grab it down in there. Now you know how to set up the new NVENC encoder, which is best utilized for single PC setups, but can also be used in dual PC setups. Don't let that fool you. You can use it in both. All right. Hopefully I explained everything to the best of my ability. If you have any questions at all, feel free. If you haven't already to hop in Discord, you can at me directly, ask me any questions you'd like. Also, feel free to follow me over on Twitch and ask me there directly live where I'll be able to get back to you. I really appreciate the early support. Some of you have already come over from watching my dual PC setup streaming video. It's really awesome to see some of you already come over and supporting the community. I appreciate it a lot. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, please. If you wanna help out the channel the most here on YouTube and you don't wanna jump in Discord or over on Twitch, just hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. It tells YouTube that I'm doing good and the videos that I make are helpful. So please help me out. I greatly appreciate it. We're closing in on 100 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Play with this 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 crew, this squad. Dude, there's oh, no. so many good games. Oh, oh thank yeah. God. Set it for <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I... Woohoo! He had a heart attack because he fell off the building. Nice.